Hi, everyone. Um, it's a big pleasure today for me to talk to Dr. Jason Fung. Um, we both have dedicated our recent professional lives to fasting, each one from a different angle. Dr. Fung, as everyone knows, is uh, probably the most prominent voice in intermittent fasting around the world and has been for a good six, seven years now, uh, first trying to help his patients with intermittent fasting, but then uh, when he saw the benefits, tried to bring it to the world and, and is now a big voice, a uh, shared voice around the world uh, about intermittent fasting and the benefits. We're going to talk about all of this today. Um, I myself, I lead Almutra, which is the company that was founded by Professor Walter Longo. And our goal is to help people get the benefits of fasting while they're eating food. You've all heard about the fasting mimicking diet and a lot of the recent science now is showing major benefits. We're going to talk about that. But from our side, if you want to do a longer fast for a longer rejuvenation, instead of doing it with starvation, you do it with food on intermittent fasting. Obviously, it's easier to do it on water. And this is where Dr. Jason Fung is going to uh, talk today about that and about the benefits so that we both help you integrate fasting in your life and do it the right way. That's very important for both of us. So thank you for your time today, Dr. Fung. Well, thanks um, for having me. It's great to yeah. be here. So, um, You've, uh, you've had numerous, numerous uh, YouTube and, and presentations and, seminar, and seminars about intermittent fasting. If, if we don't want to take a long time today, but we want to be very cost effective for our you know, listeners, what do you feel is like the top three, four things you want to transmit to the world about intermittent fasting and, and the benefits there so that we share those with our listeners? Yeah, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about fasting, which is, that uh, it's something that's sort of intrinsically harmful to the human body, um, but it's really not. If you think about it, and I hear this all the time, people say, oh, you know, fasting is really bad for you. You shouldn't fast. I'm like, well, if you think about it, it, fasting is just a period of time that you don't eat. Think about it very simply. When you eat, your body is going to take in uh, calories and nutrients, and you're going to store some of that. When you don't eat, your body's going to digest that food and, and use some of the calories that you've stored away. So it's just a balance. So if you say that you, you, you don't support fasting, then really what you're saying is that we should just eat all the time. If you eat all the time, that means your body is just going to keep storing that food energy, those calories, and it stores and it in the body. Fat. And, we, and we see what happens with living it today, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I remember when I graduated med school, and here for everyone, we're, we're both physicians, we're both dedicated our life to medicine and then to lifetime medicine. When I graduated uh, in, in health policy uh, from Harvard, I remember 2007, the, the budget in healthcare in the US was $2.3 trillion. Today, it crossed four trillion dollars, and no curbing of obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all the chronic diseases. And it goes back to what you're saying: is if we keep doing the same, we we live today in a fad. Fasting is not the fad. Fasting is what our ancestors did all the time. They ate and didn't eat. And I think we're living in a fad of overeating. So I wanted to interject that. To, to what you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, 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 the idea that it's some kind of fad is actually so, like most, like most of the myths about fasting, it's actually the exact opposite because yeah. it is literally something that people have been doing for at least thousands of years. We know this because we have historical texts about the ancient Greeks who fasted and so on. So if something was gonna go wrong and something was really bad was gonna happen, then we would have figured it out 2000 years ago, not fasting is this great thing. So understand that it's uh, up until recently, fasting was considered this tremendously healthy thing. It was a purification, it was a cleanse, you're allowing your body to take a break from eating. And that's how people saw it as something very healthy, not fun, but healthy for you. And you do it once in a while so that you stay healthy, sort of like brushing your teeth. Nobody likes to, but it keeps you healthy. So same thing with fasting. It's just something you do once in a while to stay healthy. And then all of a sudden in the last 30 years, it's, uh, you know, and a lot of it, I think, from food companies and so on, people just saying you must eat all the time. As soon as you get up, you must eat. You have to have snacks. You have to have bedtime snacks. So if you're eating as soon as you get up and then eating a bedtime snack, really, you're going the entire day 
just eating. And so, so it's not a fad, as you say, it's actually the exact opposite of a fad. <laughs> it's the oldest dietary intervention in the book. And, and same with uh, some of the myths, like, you know, your body is going to shut down, go into starvation mode, same thing. Remember, your body simply switches fuel sources. You have calories stored on your body. That's what all body fat is. No more, no less. It's a store of food energy. So use it. If you can use it, why does your body have to shut down? In fact, it doesn't. It's the exact opposite. If you actually measure uh, the amount of calories people burn after fasting, it tends to go up because your body is actually activating itself. And that's basic physiology. Yeah. Uh, it's due to these counter-regulatory hormones. So a lot yeah. of the myths are actually completely yeah. uh, the, the opposite of what we believe to be true. And that's why it can be such a beneficial thing. And then, and then you know, along with those health benefits, you get all these other benefits. That is, you know, it's very simple. It's been sort of tested over time. It's been, it's, 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 it's convenient, it's flexible. You can do it sometimes, not do it sometimes. So there's all these benefits. You could work it into any diet you want. If you're uh, vegan, you can still fast. If you're, you know, paleo, if you're keto, whatever it is you eat. It's about the timing, not about what you eat. It's more about exactly. the timing of, uh, and, uh, and it's important to mention that the 2017 Nobel Prize of Medicine was about this biological clock also of the organs, right? That, that the organs have to also sleep, not just the brain at night, including yeah. the GI tract. And, and fasting not only has that downstream metabolic, like you said, weight and metabolic benefits, but actually it reharmonizes the, the, uh, the periods of organ resting and organ rejuvenation and, and, and at night. And, and this is very important. Coming on top of 2016 Nobel Prize in Medicine, was, was, which was straight on fasting and autophagy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and you, were, you were describing the metabolic benefits of intermittent fasting. What, what we do more at, at the Alutra is, okay, how about... Now go from the easier fast that you're describing, which a lot of people should do, uh, uh, is how can we take some of them into a prolonged fast? And the only reason to stress more the body is to actually stress the cells and have them rejuvenate. That was the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2016. And obviously it's a little bit difficult to go a few days on a water fast. And for some, it's actually risky. This is why the National Institute of Health has sponsored us to develop the fasting mimicking diet over here is how can you help people eat something while keeping the cells under the stress of fasting so that the cells rejuvenate and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and benefit both from a healthy aging standpoint, but also from, uh, from a health standpoint. And, and this is yeah. where I think the new science of fasting is heading towards, okay, intermittent fasting and great benefits, prolonged fasting with a fasting mimicking diet for some, for, you know, a few times a year to do a deeper intervention. I want to hear your opinion about that. And, yeah, and, and I think that that's a fascinating sort of, um, you know, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating sort of idea because there's a lot of risk with longer fasts, of course. Um, like anything, the longer you go, the more powerful it is, but at the same yeah. time, there's more risk. And, and that's yeah. just almost any intervention you do, drugs are the same. Higher dose is more powerful, but there's more risk yeah. of side effect, same thing. So fasting is the same. So I think that the whole idea of being able to do it easier because there is some food there and also doing it sort of in a sort of slightly less intense way, but still keeping a lot of those benefits is super, super fascinating. And, uh, you know, what, I, you know, I think has been really interesting to me uh, is, is the research you've been doing, because, you know, it's a great idea, but ideas are just ideas. You need science and you need data to back you up. And that is one of the things that I think you've uh, really pushed forward is that science of, uh, hey, does this work? Maybe it does, yeah. maybe it doesn't, right? We, we don't know because we've never done it before, right? But, but now we know because there are all these studies. So what, you know, what do you think are the, 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 you know, the most interesting sort of uh, fields that you're seeing the benefits in? Well, I mean, it's amazing. We've, um, we've completed almost 18 trials now on the fasting mimicking diet. And there's another 12 in the pipeline that are happening. And we're looking at multiple organs, multiple systems. 
something very important for the listeners to know is when you're fasting, every cell of your body is going through the transition. And I always say it's like, it's like um, imagine you own a company and imagine, let's say you need $100,000 you know, funds per month to operate it. If like the, it's like the body needing, say, you know, 2,000 calories if, if you're on the bigger side. And when you come and you don't give that 100,000 to the company, to the CEO, that CEO has the stress of no funds and he goes and tries to fix the company, tries to cut some budgets, try to kind of uh, reshape some positions, et cetera. And this is what we see is the body is restructuring functionally and, and, and physiologically when you take it beyond the second day of fast. So we call prolonged fasting to help our listeners. Anything beyond the second day of fast is a prolonged fast. And what we have studied mostly is to do the fasting mimicking diet, our, our nutritional program on average for five days. Um, in the five days you can uh, uh, get a lot of metabolic benefits. You lose a lot of weight, obviously. A lot of people love that a lot of healthy aging benefits from the cellular rejuvenation. But then we started looking at, hey, can we help patients that have metabolic issues like diabetes and prediabetes? Can we help people with their cancer treatment? Can we help people with their uh, you know, other treatments? When the body is trying to restructure, does the body say, I have a health issue in here. Let me go now that I'm in a survival mode. Let me go and, and try to deal with it. And, um, and a lot of the science is turning uh, into very promising initial, uh, initial results. And, um, and for those who are interested, a lot of that is published in the top three science journals, Science, Nature, and Cell. And, um, and um, you, Dr. Fung, have reviewed a lot of those as well. Um, I don't want to go into, because I'm the CF of coming, I want to go into claims and tell the benefits on, on what we're saying. But from a company standpoint, we're super interested in helping people with metabolic disorders and diabetes is a very big area that we're going after. And number two, a lot of folks with cancer, cancer needs calories to grow, cancer needs growth hormones in the body to grow. If you come and you bring in fasting to, to people with cancer, is that gonna weaken the cancer before chemo comes in, before hormone therapy comes in, et cetera. A lot of promising results in mice and early human trials and we're very encouraged to continue the trials that we're doing there as well. Yeah, that was, that was really interesting to me, how you can use the fasting, mimicking diet and fasting in conjunction with sort of uh, standard treatments like chemotherapy and really make a big difference. And, um, you know, one of the thing, interesting things you said, I think, was that, um, you know, it's a stress. Fasting is a stress. And, and I think this is very important because a lot of people think stress, oh, that's bad. It's not. Your body needs stress. In fact, that's the only way you survive. You stress exactly. your muscles, they get stronger. What happens yeah. when you sit and lie in bed all day? You do bed rest, right? That your muscles very quickly just atrophy because there's no stress on and them. Is all the science on the intensive training, right? All the, all the science on the intensive yeah. muscle training from the fitness. Fasting for food is like the intensive exactly. muscle training for it. Yeah. And, and, and same with the bones, right? You know that if you send uh, people to bed and lay them down and don't put any stress on that bone, that bone weakens incredibly quickly. Same with the astronauts. You take gravity, which is a stress on the bones, and it just weakens very quickly. So, you know, from a muscle standpoint, we know how to stress it. You know, from a bone standpoint, we know we need gravity. How do you stress the body from, you know, the metabolic standpoint? And that's the, the, that's the interesting thing. And to me, it's always one of these things that people used to do. Like be, there, there would be the times that they wouldn't eat. When the food was plenty, they still had times they didn't eat because it was sort of prescribed through religion or tradition or whatever it was. Um, and so, so people kept that stress on their body and not because they didn't want to live better. They want, everybody wants to live better. <laughs> they want it to be healthier. So, you know, to me, it's, it's such an interesting topic the other interesting topic I think that you're, you've done a lot of research on is sort of the immunological effects yeah. on it. And that to me, again, is a totally like it's, it's almost out of the blue because you think of fasting, you think of weight loss, you think of sugar, metabolism, but not necessarily these things like cancer and these things like, um, you know, uh, the, the immune system. So that, that to me was fascinating. 
We, uh, we just published uh, an article on the fasting mimicking diet with, uh, I think it was 18 different cancers and showing the immune activation and infiltration within the cancer, uh, the cancer organ and the same thing on autoimmune disease. And I, and I was fascinated to go back and see the old, old medicine books. We're talking hundreds of years old. When there was autoimmune, they actually recommended some kind of fasting. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, immunity is why blood cells are replicating fast. They're, they're, and there's an inflammatory process which consumes calories. And then there's an attack against an organ. And if you're fasting, the body's saying, hey, I cannot finance high inflammation. I cannot finance high replica- replications of the cells. So the body shuts down the inflammation. And um, both now Stanford University is doing actually one of our autoimmune trials with the fasting mimicking diet. University of Miami is doing the other autoimmune trial. And we have a third one in Europe ongoing now. So we're very excited to see what's going to happen at the end, uh, uh, the results of these trials. But pure water fasting in the old, old medical books, I remember seeing that a few times, which, which, which mm-hmm. was fascinating. Yeah, because there's so many of these autoimmune diseases, which is your own immune system attacking itself, which is, yeah. it's so strange to me because why is it doing that, right? But the, 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 the more important question is, can you sort of uh, tame it down? And, and it's always interesting to me because one of the things that we treat a lot of these diseases with, of course, is prednisone, which is a synthetic form of cortisol. But if you look at fasting, of course, one of the counter regulatory hormones, which are cortisol. the sort of, yeah, exactly is cortisol. So cortisol goes up as insulin starts to fall. So it's like, in fact, is there some anti inflammatory, uh, you know, natural sure. anti inflammatory action to these longer fasts or even the shorter fasts? I don't know because we don't have the answers to that yeah. right now. And that's where I think your, your research is so important. Yeah. So that we get these answers. There's a third angle, which is in the digestive system. As you know, a lot of the autoimmune triggers now happening from leaky gut, from all the toxins we're eating and all the new kind of foreign things that are supposedly should just, you know, go out after we eat them, but they're getting absorbed and then cross matching with parts of the body as well. And, and we wonder also, because this is what we've seen in mice is when you fast, or when you eat the fasting mimicking diet, which is a plant-based healthy ingredient, are you actually allowing time also to heal and to decrease that? This is something we're also researching and looking at. So therefore you decrease the leaky gut, you decrease the inflammatory signals, like you said, with stress, cortisol is high and it's a perfect semantic to drop down the attack, the immune attack, and allow time for the attack organ to heal, to heal again. Yeah, interesting, because I actually had looked into that uh, for one of the, I'm a nephrologist, I'm a kidney specialist. So one of the diseases um, that we deal with, very common uh, glomerulonephritis is IJ nephritis. And what's interesting about it is that there's a lot of data to suggest that dietary lectins can play a role in the initiation in susceptible people of this IJ nephritis. And lectins are actually proteins that go through and get absorbed unchanged and can actually cause some of the inflammation in, in these people and some of the uh, dietary lectins, so, so gliadin or, or people who have gluten sensitivity, for example. Um, but the key is that they have to go through unchanged and that's where that whole leaky gut uh, may play a role. And by you know just letting your, your body rest, it, maybe everything sort of just tightens up again. And I always thought it's such an interesting thing because it's a lifelong disease. It's the most common type of primary kidney disease in the world. It actually affects a lot of uh, people all over the place. And if something such as, you know, fasting could be a benefit, that would be such an interesting, uh, you know, another, yet another interesting way that the fasting could impact diseases like this. And it's, I think the, the early data is, is fascinating. This is why, um, uh, you know, 12, 14 universities around the world are doing all these trials together now uh, on different health conditions. We, we're so excited and, and we're publishing almost one article every one or two months on the fasting mimicking diet. So it's, it's a very up and coming field. Um, I think uh, we're, we're, we're very excited to see if we can bring it as a new lifestyle medicine to the clinics of doctors. Um, today, 
even with being early in the science, we already have over 16,400 clinics registered with us to recommend the fasting mimicking diet uh, to wow. their patients. We think we're going to take this to, to tens and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of doctors. Our goal is to, can we put the same science that pharma puts behind a nutrition? This is what's missing in food, right? We have huge yeah. food companies, but they don't put enough on the science to bring the right. And I would say it's a bet. If you trust what you have, you should bet on it. <laughs> and we, we have bet big time on the fasting and making diet, a lot of uh, early positive data and still, and still going. Um, my goal as a doctor who left medicine to come to the to to join force with with Professor Walter Longo, who who founded the company, was can we bring a first NutriTech? Can we bring a nutrition technology as medicine in the clinics of doctors? And can we have a version for the consumer? You're familiar with Prolon. We have a Prolon in the market for the last five years. It's a soft version where people do it for rejuvenation and aging. And can we therefore bring fasting back in a, in a way, and this is where, where, where your voice was so big as well, to bring back fasting with us to, to, to the world. Can we create that concentrated mass of science and voice to once and for all tell this fasting story to the world? I think this is what we've been able to achieve. I don't know if people know, but the latest statistics show that fasting is the number one dietary pattern in the U.S., it fluctuates between clean eating and fasting for the last two to three years. But the last health surveys, 2020, 21, 22, or 2019, 2020, and 21, had fasting among the top two or three dietary patterns in the U.S. I think this is something I wanted to talk live to you today. First, to thank you on behalf of everyone for being a voice of fasting. And, and I always thank our founder, Professor Walter Longo, who was patient enough to stay 23 years in lab and research before bringing one product to the market, Prolon, and then <laughs> we're bringing others, of course, but it takes a lot of ethics and work to, to, to do that. And um, uh, I do remember waves of physicians trying to bring fasting to the world. There was a wave in the 60s. There was a wave, I think, in the early part of the previous century, the science was not there, but now the science and, and big social media and big followers and believers are, are uh, joining this movement that we're creating. Um, and I wanted to thank you with it. I know you have a uh, restricted time, but any final word before we depart here around fasting and living a healthy, long life? Well, I think that that's, you know, you've said it well, and the, the key is to bring the science. And I think where your, you know, El Nutra is different is that there's a lot of nutrition companies, right? Everybody, there's this supplement and that supplement and this drink and that drink and this bar and that bar. But what they're not doing is bringing also the power of the fasting with it, right? So you're bringing the nutrition, you're bringing in all the benefits of the fasting, whereas people are just like, they're just trying to throw in the, the nutrition, like here, take this vitamin or take this supplement or take these pile of supplements. Well, you've got the supplements, but you don't have the fasting, right? Whereas uh, El Nutra has, you know, not only the nutrition, but the fasting. So you're actually so much, you know, in terms of potential benefits, there's just so much more there. And I'm happy to see, you know, a lot of the studies, uh, you know, bearing out exactly what you've um, hypothesized, right? And this is important because we can all have hypothesis, but that's all, that's all it is until you do the studies. And, and, and there have been very few. And, and that's why it's so great to see the, the studies that you're doing and you know it's uh you know we keep we keep going we keep trying to make people healthy that's what we do right yeah well thank you very much for your time today and for the support and um we'll continue that tag team uh, until we make sure people embed the right fasting in their life again not any fast some fasts are not are not the right ones but fasting the right way and doing the fasting and making diet a few times a year we believe this is, should be a part of the lifestyle of people rather than eating all the time the same way we started this, uh, this podcast or this discussion. Um, we're going to be relentless up until we achieve this and help people regain back life within life, right? It's, it's very important. It's not just live long, but live yeah. healthy long. And our tagline is adding life to life, yeah. <clears throat> which is very important. So uh, thank you for everything you've been doing for the last six years and bringing this to the world. Thank you for your time today. And, um, and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you. This was great. We'll do it again.